so the the honest answer is my end state has never changed and i yeah. think that those of us who plan and have great conviction in our north star i think that's the case for all of us yeah now the road there is incredibly tumultuous and unpredictable and so the end state was all right if you want to be walt disney what does that actually practically mean it yeah. means that you have to have incredible story sensibilities, but then you also have to understand how to create systems that deploy those stories and make them highly interactive, engaging, useful. And yeah. so, you know, when I was in college, if you want to be Disney, the first place you go to check all those boxes is Disney. So I entered there twice as you just articulated. My claim to fame is my last project was a movie that ended up becoming Frozen. And I was the first person yeah. to Disney to touch it. I had a very provincial job on it, so it was not important, but, but it was exciting. And I, I feel like I got an immense appreciation for how rigidly a machine needs to work to tell the most magnificent stories that are critically acclaimed, commercially profitable, but also just culturally indelible to you know young people like I was when I saw Beauty and the Beast. And I feel like I, I got that story experience well enough. The reason I went to Google was when I was graduating, there were basically two decisions, go to the mailroom in an agency or go to Disney or a studio like that, or be lucky enough, I should say, or go to tech. And this was the height of the largest economic recession in, in effectively our domestic history. I think our world's history, our unemployment rate for graduating seniors in my university was twice that of what it usually was. And I unfortunately am somewhat practical Asian in some cases. I, I looked at the world and was like, all right, are you going to go to the place that pays more or pays less? And so that was one calculus. But then and the second calculus was, as much as a 21 year old can portend, I thought that the next Disney was not like, a, and this is obvious now, but a decade and a half ago or so, or a decade ago, like, I didn't think that the next Disney was a walled garden. I thought it was a raised wall where you democratize not only the distribution of content, which we take for granted now, was yeah. not self-evident back then, but you also more importantly democratize creation. And I think that democratization of creation, which I call the God power, like yeah. how do you make wine from water? How do you give life to death? Like that's what's compelling. And there was no platform or company doing this better at the time than YouTube. Now YouTube at the time was garbage. It was like getting sued by Viacom for $1.1 billion. Like it was, it was like my first YouTube video is Charlie and the Unicorn, which looks like someone on Astatrip just decided to cobble together like, you know, pictures and clip art, but, but like the potential was so obvious. Mm -hmm. And and so I applied, I was very clear I wanted to go to YouTube. Uh, I got very, very lucky and ended up being the only person in my university to get into the executive management program, uh, which now long, no, no longer exists there because it's too expensive. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and I got an incredible opportunity to basically build with a bunch of others, the creator ecosystem as we know it, um, partly because we worked hard, partly because no one cared about it. Um, and so we, we were left to our own devices. Thank you for joining me on this episode. If you receive value, I truly, truly appreciate it. If you could leave a five-star review, it will help the show grow. And I'd love to connect with you. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at KianVuMD. If you haven't already, pick up a copy of my book, Thrive State, at thrivestatebook.com. And remember, you are your best medicine.